Uh, hello everyone, welcome to Rabung Mada. Uh, my name is Sepanya Dolorosa. On behalf of Rabung Mada, I will be your host for today. Uh, honestly, I'm really nervous here because the topic for tonight is one of my favorite architects and it will be presented by Carlotta Testa and Gabriel Kogan. And holy moly, uh, man, I, I can't believe it. Marcio Kogan himself is coming to town today uh, uh, and for the moderator for tonight as usual is my partner here Randy Hendrawan hello are you ready are you nervous too <laughs> okay uh, let's start it let's get ready here we are Randy Hendrawan thank you buddy for the cute introduction Yes, I guess I'm nervous here. Mr. Marcio and Gabriel Kogan are here already, and my friend Carlotta Testa is here also. Uh, before that, I would like to say good evening for everyone from Indonesia. And during this pandemic, we are managing we are managing this kind of uh, cross continents uh, online lecture from three different continents. Our speaker, Carlotta Testa, is in Naples, Italy. Good afternoon, Carlotta. Good afternoon. Hey, Carlotta. And also the other uh, speakers, uh, which is the, our topic themselves, uh, Marcio and Gabriel Kogan are here from Sao Paulo. Uh, good morning for Gabriel and Marcio. Good Thank morning. you for coming. Hello, good morning. <laughs> and yeah, uh, this is our 16th edition and it's been very, very nice for still doing this during this what's so-called your know, normal and we're still doing learning of architecture uh, until this time and, and able to do like crossing to borders uh, from every different countries and learning every different architects from, from all over the world. And thank you also for the audience who, who already come in here. Uh, okay, I will start uh, to the main events maybe. Uh, I would like to to introduce Gabriel Koken uh, before before we he will start the opening speech. So Gabriel Kogan is an architect, critic, and professor. Recently, he's a PhD student at FAU USP or Facultade di Architettura e uh, Urbanismo da USP, uh, where he res researches the relation between Japanese and Brazilian architecture graduated from the Faculty of Architecture and Urbanism at the University of Sao Paulo in 2009. Gabriel is the professor at Escola di Cidade and guest lecturer at Politecnico di Milano, the university that I was studying before. Uh, offers free courses at MASP in 2016 and MUBE in 2017 and 18, 
he's the comp contributor to Forja de San pa Sao Paulo, and also wrote for Revista Bamboo, AU, and the Japanese A plus U and GA houses. In 2013, he presented a master's degree at UNESCO in the Netherlands. Between 2007 to 2015, he worked at the architecture firm studio MK27, which is uh, started by Marcio Gugan, his father himself. Uh, he participated in the pre-elementary project of the Museum of Mines and Metal by Paulo Mendes de Roca in 2006 also. Uh, and the organization, the organization of Arte Cidade by Nelson Brissat in 2005. In 2015, he founded the Centro Pesquisa Urbanas Institute and revitalized uh, Revista Centro. He is also the member of the AP APCA Trophy Jury for the Architecture category. So hello, Gabriel. Hello, thank you so much for this invitation. It's a great <laughs> pleasure to talk with you. Unfortunately, I've never been to Indonesia, but uh, I hope to, to go as soon as we uh, wake up uh, from this nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We all hope we are, we are over with this pandemic for sure. And I hope I could also visit Sao Paulo. <laughs> yeah, you um, are pretty much welcome here. Thank you, thank you. I'm looking forward also for Marcia. <laughs> and I, I would like to start with the basic question maybe about uh, how you uh, describe Marcia himself, uh, your father, uh, as an architect regarding to his architecture uh, as in studio MK27. Could you tell me? Yeah, it's not uh, such a, an easy question, I think, because uh, <laughs> I, I, I was somehow born inside uh, an architecture studio. So I remember going there when I was maybe four or five years old. My first contact with computers were there and I started to play SimCity, I remember going there. So uh, it's very hard to have this kind of distance to, to assess. But actually that is being my exercise in my, I, I'm trying to do that in the last three or four years after I left uh, uh, the, the Studio MK27. Uh, and I wrote some texts. Some of them were published just in Italian and one is in Portuguese, which I try to go to my memory of the childhood and this project of Studio MK27 before Studio MK27 and when it was basically Marcio himself. And uh, this, this, uh, these were very strange projects actually and no one really knows them. Uh, if we go to, to the main architects in the world, like Alvaro Siza and uh, Toyo Ito, all these, these guys, uh, we, we have access to, to the, the first projects. And uh, actually, I love to study them. Uh, for me, the, it contains the DNA of the architecture in the future. And uh, th these first projects were actually never photographed and they were never published, most of them. Uh, I have just in my mind, so I, I, actually me or Marcio and some very few people are the, the future for this, but uh, they were made in uh, brick. Uh, all, almost all of them were using this uh, technique, uh, which was not the co uh, concrete, the beton brut, that was very common in Brazil in the 70s and even in the 80s, or it were, were not even the white houses that became famous in the 90s uh, in his uh, career. I, I think that there are two, two issues that are very important. First of all, trying to seek for uh, simplicity. Uh, but of course, simplicity in the end of the 70s and the beginning of the 80s was, was pretty much different from what we consider simplicity today. <laughs> and simplicity is always very hard. And uh, the work in the plan, I think that uh, in this sense, uh, we still very Corbusian. We are trying here in Brazil to get the, the, the architecture from the plan. We don't use models. We don't uh, 
many in Studio MK strategy seven use uh, not a lot the cross section, which is common in other in other studios in Brazil. But basic the plan is the most important thing, and uh, that uh, leads me to the second issue, which is spatiality. I think uh, the, all these projects they were dealing with spatiality, working with, for example, high uh, high ceilings. Uh, which is not uh, so common anymore in Studio MK27 projects. Uh, I think that uh, in a certain moment, the spatiality started to be more horizontal, but uh, I can still see some traces. The turning point is for me the Duplessis house, which you can find online, I, I guess. Uh, for me, is the turning point of all of these uh, issues that time. Same probably in 2000. I'm not sure about the, the precise date, but it was 1999 or 2000. This must be really, <laughs> really, I don't know, interesting um, process, right? So I, I also uh, read the, the 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 interview that we were doing before with Marcio that. He he was also started uh, to struggle, uh, or I guess in the early '80s, how how people in Sao Paulo mostly wants like the, the ornamented houses, like like for example like Mediterranean or uh, the new Egyptian ornamented architecture. So uh, it must be really interesting how how MK27 giving like the new you know the new spirit that maybe. Uh, some of Brazilian architects already, already just like, such are uh, Paulo Mendes da Roca or, and also uh, Lina Bobardi, for example. So it must be really interesting. But from from all of those experiences, uh, which one is your favorite? I mean, do you have like a the most favorite uh, experience or the most favorite commission project, maybe? So which one is your favorite, the most? I'll, I'll guess uh, that uh, in terms of history of the of the architecture studio, I would recommend this Duplessis house. Uh, and uh, in terms of projects that I took part, I think the most uh, interesting one is the Studio SC, which is a photographic studio for food, basically. And uh, what was very interesting at this project, uh, we made a really collective uh, workflow uh, and uh, we develop uh, the project together with the participation with all the members of the studio. And in the second phase, I developed the project together with Susanna. And uh, in the third phase, she was the leader, the project leader. So it was, it was, uh, and I think this, in terms of spatiality, is really impressive. This is this project actually. It's very hard to see in the photo. Once you are there, maybe Carlotta can give can give her testimonial about the, that. But uh, when you look to the images, uh, it's very hard to perceive what is this space. And I tried. Uh, my, I think it was the first film that I tried to do with Pedro Coque. We tried to film there, but uh, we were never well succeed as well. You, you were mentioning about films. Uh, I like to tell you that. Today I watch almost, not almost, but all of the films from, from the website of MK27 and all of them are tremendous. I always love it. I remember I watched uh, you both lecture in Mantova and you play also few few films of, of Marcio Kuven uh, for MC, MK27 work. So I would like to, to ask you about your your personal interest or maybe both of you from, from uh, maybe this question and also for uh, Gabriel and also for Marcio. Uh, why films? Why films that makes you both interest uh, as the media to expressing the idea of works of architecture? Uh, why films? Maybe you can you can start. I, I will maybe... speak very briefly and then I finish my participation uh, here <laughs> because we want to hear him as well. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think there are two dimensions. Uh, first. Uh, to deal with the representation of architecture 
uh, which is also always an, uh, an impossibility. And uh, secondly, I think to, to attach, uh, uh, attach architecture to the fictional world, which is, I think, something that uh, architecture never left. It's always fiction. So uh, this is interests me a lot. Wow. Okay. Th okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, so I will much. be yeah. here for any any questions okay. and comments. We're going. We're going. We're uh, we're going to catch you back in the middle of the discussion, maybe. Thank you. And also, uh, I would like to say hi to Marcio himself, maybe. Okay. Hi. hi. Hello, Randy. Marcio. Hello. <laughs> Thanks again. Just um, say uh, two interesting things. Mm -hmm. One is uh, in Brazil. At the same time that I that I looked from my window and I can see Greek style, Mediterranean, neo French, neo neo classicism, everything we had during the uh, at the end of the thirties, a very impressive modernism. It began with Le Corbusier visiting Brazil at the end of the 30s and before the Second War. And uh, it was a very strong movement that happened from the end of the 30s. And not only one architect as Oscar Niemeyer, but a lot of architects. It was very important because it was 10, 15 architects doing a great job in a very distant country. It's a kind of a third world country, completely isolated from the rest of the world. And during this 30, 40, 50, creating such a very good architecture and good music, good art, everything. It was, a, for me today, it was the most important modernism movement in history. It's interesting to, to learn about it, to study about it. And uh, at the end with uh, Lina Bobardi, and recently with uh, Paulo Mendes da Rocha. And uh, it was very, very, very interesting. And another thing, it's uh, I began my life, my professional life, or during my study years in architecture, uh, at the same time, making films, short films. Until 1987, when I directed a long feature film, and after a fantastic career in short films, and at that moment I didn't know if I would be an architect or a filmmaker, and ended with a huge disaster that was my long feature film. And uh, in 2012, when they invited our office to represent Brazil to the Venice Biennale, I returned to make films. And uh, now, Gabriel directed us, in my opinion, the best one, the best ones, and uh, more recently. And now, nowadays, is the the short films are more related with uh, with architecture and not. Uh, and after my bankruptcy, when I directed the long feature film, and after that I decided to be an architect. Wow! Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, you you were mentioning about your pavilion in Venice Architecture Biennale in 2012. Uh, you did the, the Brazilian pavilion is uh, are dividing the. The, the, the representation of the past and the future, and the past was from uh, from Lucio Costa, the Brazilian city, and, and you and you decided to to showing films as the as your present uh, as your present representation in Brazil, and uh, I think that was a really interesting pavilion. And uh, we sh we uh, shared the our the pavilion with Lucio Costa. Mm -hmm. But I, I was uh, very honored to do that because I love him. Lucio yeah. Costa is the guy who designed Brasilia. It wasn't in Oscar Niemeyer. 
he won the competition to design the master plan of the city and he gave all the principles of the project. Well, must be really interesting experiences. So, yeah, thank you for both of you for making this opening speech. And <laughs> we're going to catch you back again. So now we're going, uh, we're moving to Carlota. Uh, Carlota, are you there? Hi, yes. Yes, I would like to read your bi short bio a little bit and you can, you can start your presentation. Not your, 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 your uh, presentation with, with those video that you want to share. So Carlota Testa, uh, I met her in, 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 in the campus of Mantua while you were co-teaching with Marcia and Gabriel Cogan in Politecnico di Milano, Mantua campus. Uh, Carlota Testa is an architect, graduated from the Politecnico di Milano. For the bachelor, she wrote a thesis called Architecture Storyboard, uh, her research about the design methodology of Marcio Kogan. Uh, she also worked with Kogan at the Studio MK27 in 2016 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and then uh, in Studio Annie Holtrop in Bahrain in 2018 and at uh, NP2, NP2F Architects in Paris till nowadays. Carlota also keep doing the academic research by working as a teaching assistant in Marcia Kogan's uh, design studio for three years in Politecnico di Milano, uh, also in Paolo Burki's landscape design studio for two years, and recently in Tom Affermate studio on the team of Common Grounds for a Semester. Carlota also joined several international workshops, such as in Inuji, Inujima workshop with, with Kazuyo Sejima from Sana uh, in Italy, Zurich, Switzerland, and also in uh, with NYU in New York City. Hello, Carlota. Carlota, uh, you, may, you may start your introduction presentation and then we're going <laughs> to discuss after. <laughs> Thank you very much for the introduction. So basically, I, as uh, Randy said, I met uh, Marcio and Gabriel when I, when I was a student. So I, I met them in a workshop in, uh, in Milan. We were just 15 students, so it was very a very warm atmosphere. And I had the, the occasion to speak uh, with Max and Gabriel and to, let's say, become friends also. And afterwards, they uh, invited me to take part of the, of the studio, the design studio one they have uh, in, uh, in Mantova, at Politecnico di Milano. And uh, after this experience, I uh, wrote my uh, thesis uh, project on the, on the method of uh, Marcia uh, and Gabriel, so the, the studio in general. And uh, then I went to work there in, uh, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. I worked on three projects, the project of a house in, uh, in Spain and uh, two uh, refurbishments in, uh, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. And let's say what interests me the most, apart of having met really two beautiful person and two friends, was the, the way they, they both approach architecture on, a, on an academic way. So the way they stimulate students to approach a project and the way as well in which they do themselves uh, approach architecture. And I think, uh, and I started to write this essay because I was really, really, really impressed. And I think it's the, the thing that can interest the most uh, other students and other professionals who want to uh, approach the subject and find themselves on, in, in front of a, a project and ask themselves, what do I do? Where do I go? Well, which is my aim? Because we have so many uh, let's say so many options when dealing with an architecture project that sometimes we have to select and this selection I think it's the thing that uh, changes the most uh, what's the, the result of a project. In the case of uh, Studium K27, the, what influenced the most uh, their uh, approach is for sure uh, there is a um, a story that Marcio used to tell us about the first time he approached the, the cinema, which I found uh, 
beautiful and it, it was when he was still a kid he was coming back to school and it was raining and uh, so he hid himself in a cinema and there was the beautiful movie the silence of batman playing and it was the first time let's say who, in which he entered in contact with the cinema and also with art in general and he feels the effect that art can do on a on a soul, on a person. And so from then there on, he was in doubt, as he said, in between being a, an architect or a filmmaker, to the extent that at the point uh, when he already had his studio, it was called Instant Studio, if I'm not wrong, uh, connected to the Instant City, uh, so Archibald and a bit the radical movement, he, he stopped the, the studio to make a movie to make a, a, a long movie, the first long movie that was uh, Fire and Passion, so Father and Passion, and with Isai, his friend, and as he said, it was a really huge failure, so uh, he was losing all his clients, and uh, since this time on, he decided, fortunately for all of us, to go back to architecture. And uh, he went just back to the cinema in the occasion of the 2012 uh, uh, Biennale di Venezia, where, as we were saying with Lucio Costa. And uh, I found this, uh, uh, this exhibition very, very interesting because it's also a way to, through a house, through a, an architectural project, to, to tell a story about what, is, what it means living in a society like the Brazilian society where you have two really different and opposed um, classes, the, a low class of people, uh, let's say, working in the house and uh, an upper class of the clients and the owner of the house that are coexisting in a, in a space. So in this uh, exhibition, you could say, you could see from the two sides, like uh, in a reality show, you could dig in the life uh, and spy the life inside the house. And you could see how some spaces of a house are used only by uh, the people working there, some spaces only by the owners, some spaces are mixed. And so all the dynamics that you can normally see in a city or in, a, in an urban environment in Sao Paulo are also mixed inside the, the, the house space of a, uh, of a house, like in this case. Uh, this was just to introduce the the world of the of the movies so to introduce the this uh, field that had a, an, an incredible influence on the on the way to do architecture that now is uh, coming back with the uh, short movies that studio mk27 is doing to represent architecture so it's a mean to explain an architecture that as gabriel was saying before it's very hard to to show just in pictures or in with the plan or uh, with the, the section is, is not, uh, in my opinion, a two-dimensional architecture. It's an architecture that is made of uh, material, texture, space, the atmosphere that you feel when, when you're inside, the, the temperature and the movement that you do inside this architecture. And all this is shown by by the movies that are able in different way to grab this this there are the results and also what i was saying before the aims at the at the base and at the center of uh, uh, studio mk27 design so i will share again this screen to show you uh, three videos <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so basically this uh, was the Casa Cubo, so it's a house in, uh, in San Paolo, in the Jardin district. And uh, it's the first video, uh, I think the video in which is most, uh, it sticks out the most, where the objects uh, are, and the, the scenes are still, and the objects are constantly moving, or the, it's the architecture that is changing and not the scene. So the, the image is uh, locked on, a, on, on, a, on an object, on a wall, or uh, on the floor, and it's the architecture with her, with her time and, and with the shadow that it's uh, introducing the, the movement. I think this speaks a lot of, uh, of one of the fundamental uh, topics of Studium K27, which is the, the atmosphere inside the spaces and the, the, the fact that the architecture is not conceived as a, an object. Uh, and uh, while it's conceived with all her, um, all her temperature and the atmosphere inside, and so the, the light and the shadow that pass, uh, pass uh, by the Musharabi or the du soleil, which are a component that always comes in architecture, in the architecture of student MK27, really, really sticks out in this video. Uh, a second thing that sticks out, I think, is the attention of the Studium K27 to materials and textures, so, uh, and the way they absorb light or the way you touch it, because the, the architecture has a, uh, let's say, a, a, also a sense, the, the tactile sense, so the textile and the texture of, uh, of architecture is, a, is an important component. I remember when I was in studio, there was a room uh, completely uh, dedicated to materials where you could uh, stay for hours choosing uh, uh, which was the perfect uh, combination and in, uh, it's an, a third thing that uh, sticks out in, the, in, the, in this video is the attention of, um, that master gives to details so anything is left to case there are many uh, studio that uh, uh, just uh, design uh, like an input and it's a big question of architecture i think to which extent you you draw you design something and to which extent you leave things to case and i think in the studio more and more uh, uh, they, they are starting to design really the every every single element and uh, now i would like to present the second video. Thank you. 
Okay, so the second house was Toblerone House, and uh, it's called like this for the Bissole that has the, the triangular shape of a Toblerone. And uh, I think this is the in this second video we can see one of the the other main topic of the design, which is the use. So the most of uh, most of all the user. So in uh, Student K27, when you design, you always think of uh, the space and the way it will be inhabited. In a way, um, like a filmmaker would do, by imagining a bit the scenes of a quotidian life that you could have in the space. So, uh, for example, when we see the, the, the owner doing yoga on the on the terrace when we see the uh, the people laying down in the living room in in this case through the cat that is passing by the house we can see the the way we inhabit the space the way people interact with the space and between them in the space and also the movement we follow the cat in the movement in the promenade architectural that you can do from uh, one floor to the other or inside the, the house. In a way, this is all coming to, from the film, like a scenography, like a script. And uh, there is a sentence that once Matsu said during an interview, um, he said, uh, speaking about the house, he said the house is a script. It always has a beginning, a middle, and a hem, in the end. So um, this way to imagine the, the people living inside and the, the, the scenes that you could uh, present to the uh, true architecture to the, the people living inside the house, it's really something peculiar of a, of a method, of an approach that is specific, uh, I think, of the Studium K27 and it's quite unique. And the third video shows uh, another interesting approach, in this case, I think, with the modernist movement. And I just blew. This home, located in the chaotic city of Sao Paulo, stands out for its consistent application of the latest innovations in housing construction and technology. The first thing we notice is a system of electrical pop-up grommet integrated in the countertop, providing electricity for this toaster. Just turn it on, and we will have some yummy toast for breakfast. The kitchen also includes the latest in appliances, like the drying racks, built into the cupboard, and this garbage disposal built in near the sink. This pipe, for example, links the kitchen directly to the garbage bin. Everything is linked. In the living room, the glass doors recess into the wall, creating an open space that every modern architect dreams about, the perfect dialogue between indoors and out. Wooden panels can be adjusted for effective control of the sun rays. Next to the patio, cordon steel panels open and close, instantly transforming this space into a modern Italian pizzeria. Next to the garage, there is a wine cellar with a crushed stone floor to soften the accidental fall of the Chateau Margaux 2009 vintage. Modern technology protects the vital signs of the home. The solar and electric energy, in addition to natural gas, even diesel fuel for the generator, when nothing else works. Here, for example, is a system that automatically injects chlorine into the pool. On the upper floor, with its four bedrooms, there's a chute that sends clothes directly to the laundry room. Floor to ceiling, closets have the latest sensors that automatically turn the lights on and off. A hallway separating the bedrooms can be used as a small waiting room. Everything is linked to everything else.
Okay, so this last video, I, I think it's a bit the uh, manifesto what Max was saying about the, his relation with the, with the modernist movement, the Brazilian modernist movement, and uh, together with the uh, Reddit House, I think the video as well explains a bit this uh, relation. And it's uh, from a first moment when he a bit refused uh, during the university, where he refused a bit uh, the Brazilian uh, modern movement. He uh, made peace with it, like he came um, in contact with the, the Brazilian movement and start to uh, work in continuity with it. I think the, what Matteo was stating in this movie was all that he works in continuity with this modern movement but at the same time he has all the uh, contemporary technology and facilities and tools that uh, modern technology can offer so uh, this video was coming from a video did in the, the in, by the Bauhaus so it's, it was uh, really connected and linked to it and he adds all this uh, this difference of the contemporary architecture Something I find really linked in a, in a way to be modern in a way is the separation. So in his architecture, everything is, uh, is separate a bit like uh, the, the most uh, representative of this is uh, in Miss Van der Rohe uh, Barcelona Pavilion, where the structure is separate from the lab, is separate from the walls that are partitions and the the, the bench, which is uh, only a decoration. And I think it's one of the things that stick in Marcel's architecture is that in this uh, simplicity and in this uh, essential uh, design, everything has its own role and it never, um, it never is, is never just opposed to something else. So we often find the, the, the slab in the cinema proportion, the, the structure of the columns, the, the walls, there are uh, the often glass walls between the interior and the exterior and with Brizole. Only the, let's say, blind partition when needed, when, uh, when something has to be folded or hide or... And uh, this speaks a lot, uh, I think, of uh, the a modern architecture with contemporary, with a contemporary technology and approach, and also with the with the key element of the the atmosphere and the 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 movement inside. And I would like to show the last video, which speaks a lot about the let's say the the atmosphere and the use of the space, which is the the Libreria Cultura, which is a public space. Uh, which yes is a library made in Sao Paulo and uh, in this video, in this last video, I think this really comes out as the architecture is a bit the background of a, of a way of living the space. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so yes, this was the conclusion just to say uh, as a personal experience, this space uh, while in Sao Paulo was very important to me because uh, I think uh, it has a domesticity and, uh, that, and an atmosphere that uh, makes you feel really comfortable while in Sao Paulo, which is a city where you cannot, uh, let's say, easily uh, appropriate the public space. Uh, at least it's a bit less than Europe where you don't really feel so, so comfortable to stay hours uh, reading maybe in the square. So the, the architecture of the houses and the architecture of these interiors really becomes important and an occasion to make uh, people feel comfortable and at ease. And uh, I myself, well, I was going uh, like uh, often the, on Sundays to just to read my own book. And uh, this this architecture of the amphitheater was really helping. It was working like a square among us. So thank you. Thank you, Carlotta. <laughs> Thank you for those uh, for sharing those uh, four beautiful movies. Uh, also, partly by Marcio and also partly by by, by Gabriel. Uh, I watched three first movies before, but I didn't watch the last one, which is totally interesting. Uh, I presume you you have visited few of them, or while you were in Sao Paulo, did you ever visit? Yeah. The Liberia Cultura. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was I was going there uh, often to to read my my own things. Sometimes I visited, but also I, it was a place to to stay in my day. Mm -hmm. So uh, t uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit what uh, the experiences why why while you were working in in, in a studio MK twenty seven. Like, did you have did you also visited some other projects of of Studio MK27. Yeah, I and uh, which project yeah. that you are have visited and which one is the the most interesting in, in regarding the the, the you, you were mentioning about the atmosphere uh, the atmosphere of the of the building so which which one is the most um, I don't know which one is the most uh, filling your expectation about the atmosphere that you watch through movies and then there, after that you you have visited all few buildings of them. So maybe you can share. I think the, as Gabrielle, the, the one that uh, I was more impressed by was the Studio SC. It's for sure. I, I have to say I cried when I, when I faced because uh, sometimes I feel emotional and architecture is too, too good. And it's really beautiful in two, in two senses. One is the, it's really the atmosphere of the space, which is, uh, at the same time, immense and cozy, and I don't know how. Uh, really, it's a, it has a, something industrial because you have two big doors, and it's not the proportion of uh, domesticity at all. It's not the proportion of a studio with the not, not neither the heights or the, the space you have. It's something that is more related to the industrial dimension and the proportion. But at the same time, you have these uh, two uh, big uh, um, wooden elements that are very warm and uh, that you can enter and are completely scaling um, the, the space in another dimension. And a small bridge, which is connecting the two, and uh, uh, in, the, in the concrete, which is very delicate and, and is amazing. And outside this space, you have a, a super beautiful landscape uh, intervention by Isabel Duprat, which works uh, very often with the with master student K27. And what it's really interesting as well, and I think is what uh, Gabriel was saying, it's really hard to communicate in. Uh, 
in the in the pictures is that um, around the, the the wooden elements you can climb a few steps and you arrive on uh, on another on another level through uh, which is completely disconnected with the with so you you have two uh, buildings in one which don't speak so much one to each other but in in this case uh, you have on top a really intimate uh, uh, situation and I would like to have shown some pictures but it's, it's really beautiful and, uh, and well made. This well, was my favorite. <laughs> okay so that's in regarding to working with them but uh, you also co-teaching with them in, 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 this, in Politecnico di Milano uh, and what's the difference between uh, I mean the, the point of view of when you were working I mean, they're, they're in the mindset of practicing, but how about in their academics point of view? Uh, how's your experience regarding to, to, to co-teaching with them? Because I, I never I teach by them because they, they teach in the bachelor. So I'm curious also. <laughs> I think it's very funny because uh, uh, especially Marcio, he doesn't change so much between the, the studio <laughs> and, uh, and with the students. Uh, it's, also in studio, it almost feels like uh, the discussion that we have in uh, in the design studio, in, so in Politecnico, because people come with uh, maybe a drawing a plan, and they show to Matsu, and they start to sketch, and he starts the discussion. So it's really not so different. The, the revision that we do at Politecnico di, di Milano. It, it, has something in common and I think what it, it's beautiful in, uh, in, uh, in Polytechnic and what uh, Gabriel and Matteo do with the students is the, that they really give a, a key, a recipe to, to design. For, for example, with us, uh, when I was a student, I really learned the method when I was uh, doing the workshop. In a few weeks, because it was really intense, they asked us to uh, to see, to choose a movie, to see this, to see it, to analyze the character, so it comes back the idea of the script and the user of the of the project, and then they ask us to write a text. So the project was not starting from a, a reference, as many people do nowadays. Like they look at an image and they start a project, or uh, the project was. Uh, starting from the analysis of a character of a, of a movie and from a script so basically you could think and you could foresee the project before doing it you could see the, the you, at least for me it was interesting because I could stick out which was the important uh, which were the important elements that I wanted to put and I wanted to uh, invest uh, with this project so it's something I think that was not only done in the first workshop, but in, in every other with different teams, but it was always the same thing to understand what do you want to do and where do you want to go with the project before doing it. Not a shape, not um, an image that blocks, like a reference that often blocks the, the project in a, in a finalized form, but an intention. And from this intention, you develop your project, trying to express it in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. I think this so, is a good lesson for every student. Well, yeah, I hope, because when I was studying in Politecnico and I saw Marcio and Gabriel Cogan teaching on, on only on bachelor, why they don't have it in master? I always uh, <laughs> complaining about that. But uh, Whenever I saw the, 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 the collages works of Marcio, there are always one word for me. It's about horizontality. I mean, the, those beautiful elevation are always there, you know? Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I know that Gabriel and Marcio also mentioned a little bit about the, the, the horizontal, the horizontality things in their yeah, architecture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It comes from the the screen, the the proportion of the cinema, so which always has this uh, kind of horizontality. And at the point, uh, it became more and more horizontal. I think in the, yes. in the last houses, for example, Gamma Issa was uh, still high, the and then 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, slow, slowly mm -hmm. becoming more and more horizontal, and I think it's uh, it's quite peculiar together with the the fact that the volumes are always defined, so they are always clearly visible. You never have uh, crazy uh, shapes or things that are lost. <laughs> Everything mm -hmm. is defined in a rectangular or whatever shape, and it's clearly distinguishable. So I think this comes from the modernist and the cinema together mixed uh, in the in an architectural shape. Yes, uh, of course. Um, also with those beautiful uh, the brute concrete. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, after, you can, you want to? <laughs> yes, after the disaster of my long feature film, mm -hmm. and I decided to be an architect. I quit my filmmaking life. And uh, and at the end, I brought to the architecture some very interesting things from the movie industry. One is was the proportion, the white screen, as uh, Carlotta said. The other one is the power of the light, the artificial and the natural. The scripts, the screenplay, script, the screenplay. That uh, when we design a when I design a, a project, I always think about the story. Someone is living there. It's not necessarily the client, but I imagine sometimes I am a girl, I am an old man, uh, living this place and feeling it during the process of designing it. And the last one was the teamwork the importance of the teamwork that didn't happen in architectural office. Our office now is completely collaborative. It's not only me, but it's a team. Uh, and, uh, and the name is the Studio MK27. It's uh, all the projects we have co-authors, two or three architects that worked in the project during three, four years. And this is a very important. It's also a, a huge lesson from the films. Yeah. I can totally experience this, this kind of 70 millimeters of scenery in your architect. I haven't been there. I hope I will be there one day, but I really want to prove it that it's true. I, I feel like I watched this uh, 70 millimeters taken camera mo uh, movies, such are, for example, like Laura. Lawrence of Arabia or, or, or some movies by Quentin Tarantino that always amazed me, this horizontality. Um, we are going to open for, for, for the discussion. We, we might have like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes for the discussion. Like to start with the, with, with the first question, I guess from Mas Rafael Arsono. Rafael. Hello, hello, Rafael. Thank you for uh, being here. Um, for uh, well, first, firstly, I love I love uh, all, all of your work, uh, particularly Ipe's house has been some 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 sort of main inspiration in our uh, studio. How we can uh, relate to your um, space that it's open under a, under a, under a mask, but it's open totally to the to the you know to the tropical weather, and uh, I was uh, interested in. Uh, in hearing your experience working in, will be working in Bali, you know, for, for Potato Head Hotel. I was uh, thinking you can tell more about that. And I heard you actually already bring your proposal to the, you know, to Bali, working on from uh, Brazil. But then after you visited uh, Bali, then you kind of change your mind and then uh, kind of revise your project. Can you tell more about that? And uh, yeah, what, what what was the situation with that uh, project anyway? Um, because we, you know we're very excited for to see uh, uh, your touching uh, or your interpretation in in, uh, in our country. Thank you, thank you, Randy. Thank you, Rafael. So basically, Rafael asking about. I also heard about that that you were working on one project in Indonesia, Bali, and. I, I presume that will be your first project in Indonesia, but 
uh, could you tell us uh, maybe a little bit about that project, the Potato Head Hotel? We, okay, Ronald from uh, Potato Red Head <laughs> invited us to design a hotel in Bali and we worked for two or three years. At the end, they had problem with the land about some limits of the place that we, we will spend years to make it uh, correct again. And they decided to cancel the project. I visited Bali, I loved it. And at the end, we had a complete project that they didn't uh, finish or they didn't uh, build it. And uh, hope that we work uh, again with them because I like, I like them very much. Okay, so we are expecting the second project for in Bali. Of course. So I uh, hope it will be built. <laughs> so I, I also heard yeah. that you were working with the local architect, Andra Martin, right? Yes. You were working. Yes, Mr. Andra Martin is here also with us. Masa Ang, <laughs> you can say hi to Marcio. Hi, Marcio. Hi, hi Andra. I'm glad to see you this, this time. I see okay. your face. <laughs> Congratulations for a very, very good work. I'm following you. <laughs> oh, same as, uh, as, yeah, I still remember where we are together and see me uh, in, in Valley Island and then we are going to the, the, the village or something that uh, I, uh, two or three days uh, I, I love with, uh, with you, with your team, and also uh, I'm joy with uh, your partner in that design because your design is so beautiful, so beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Hopefully, I think the same about, yeah. the same about, about your work. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, uh, there, is, there is a a little bit of Brazilian in it. Uh, Oh, thank you, thank you. Hopefully, I, I, I'll visit Brazil uh, next year. Uh, when uh, UIA, hopefully, I, I can I can meet meet you personally again. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. You'll be very welcome. <laughs> yeah. The same uh, for all of you and Randy. The day you want, I know that's not it's possible, but. In the new good future. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We yeah. have our open office for you guys. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Randy, thank you. I will, I will, <laughs> I will, I will ask, ask Andra to take me to, to Brazil when they, <laughs> when they yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Thank we, you, Andra. We still, okay. We have one question from Rishab Sarma. Uh, Rishab is one of my classmates also in Politecnico di Milano. So, Rishab, you there? Hi. Yes. Hello, Rishab. Yes. Okay, Hi. speak your question. <laughs> yeah, I have a question with Marcio actually. And it's a little. Uh, so, I look at Marcio's background right now. So it's uh, very in contrast to his. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, Rishab, we can hear you. Yeah, so Marcio's uh, backdrop right now, I, I, it looks very contrasting to his work, to me. <laughs> can Marcio explain his background with where there is a lot of miniature, you know, like a lot of stuff, like toy stuff and a lot of things vibrant it is. So Marcio can comment on his backdrop. I, I, I didn't hear you so, so well, but I, I think it's my... Can the you backdrop. Yeah, so I see your background, the backdrop, yeah. and it has a lot of small miniature things like a toy car in the left and this uh, skeleton. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's very vibrant and it's in very contrast to your, the simplicity in your work. So <laughs> can you make a comment yeah. on it? This is a kind of a paradox between minimalism and my life. In my back, I'm in my office today. There is a collection of uh, objects from my life, story of my life, small things from travels, probably I had some things from Bali, and, uh, and I have this uh, all around my office and my house. And I, I 
for me, this is important. Sometimes you design minimalist projects, but you need to put your life inside. This is very important. I don't believe in a just clear and empty space, aseptic. For me, this is architecture. This is the answer for a, I like the idea to have a very simple minimalist place to destroy it. Nice. Thank you. So, thank you. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you, Rishab. There is a question in the group chat uh, from my Fifi, from my fiance Arman. Uh, my Fifi, hello. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, she, she may be too shy to see to speak, but uh, she said like this: In your project, do you explore with local materials? If you do, how far do you pursue that? Because it's also quite. Um, uh, quite happening in Indonesia that every architect is also developing their the local materials. I mean, to 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 study from from the the locality. So how far you pursue the, um, exploring the local material? <laughs> you want to answer, Gabriel? Oh yes, maybe maybe also to Gabriel, and also Carlota if she also have some comments. I, I would say that uh, I think in 90% of the time uh, we try to use local materials, for example, when, <clears throat> sorry, when we are building outside Sao Paulo in uh, Bahia or in other places, we are always using the stones, the wood. Uh, but I would say that we are not so dogmatic on this. Huh? Uh, it, it is something that is in the back of our mind uh, it's one of the principles of the architecture, but uh, I think that it's it's not a speech, and uh, we we are trying to do that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, labor quality might be a problem sometimes in some parts of the country, for example, uh, here. So we, we are trying to gather different artisans from sometimes from Sao Paulo to, to local uh, labor. So it really, really depends. It's hard to ask that, <laughs> to, sorry, to answer that in general terms. What do you think, Marcio? I think it's always very important to have a vernacular architecture. Um, I remember now a very funny story. When we, we taught in uh, Milano, when uh, Carlotta was present, she built a model with a pasta, Italian pasta, spaghetti. <laughs> she spent days and days trying to build a model with, uh, with the uh, spaghetti pasta from Barilla. <laughs> a nightmare. My favorite, my favorite brand. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nightmare, but it uh, tells you about the <laughs> materials and how they are important. This was the wrong material. <laughs> I'm still angry with you too for having uh, given me this task. <laughs> But it was interesting. One no, thing no, that might be interesting, uh, we mentioned the horizontally, uh, yeah, this, uh, this search for the horizontally, for the, for the horizontal. Uh, and uh, this is not only in the outer shape of the building, but also in, the, in each detail. Uh, when you were designing, for example, a furniture or a window or an internal wall, uh, we are always uh, looking to the elevation and trying to seek for this horizontality. Um, so this, this, is, uh, this shows a little bit that we are pretty much attached to the culture of drawing, of, des of designing. Uh, everything is defined uh, using the pencil, the pen, and the paper. And then we go to the computer afterwards. Um, that, that tells a little bit about our process. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... We also have another 
person who, oh, it's Paula. Paula, are you there? I'm here. Yes. Hello, Paula. How are you? <laughs> Hello. Uh, well, first of all, thanks, uh, thanks <laughs> to all of you. Uh, the conversation has been really interesting. Um, I have a little bit more of a specific question, <laughs> I think. Okay, um, okay. About it's about Mikasa Volume C. Uh, well, I I studied it a little bit, and I actually got very interested in the technique you use for the structure. Um, I am from Colombia, and we are not so used to see, let's say, this kind of technique in here. And when I first saw it, it reminded me a little bit of Japanese architecture, like the kind of way you, you put the elements together. So I would like to know what was your real inspiration when, when you were designing the, the building, the project? Um, we have some moments in our office that we'd like to try new technologies. And Mikasa Volume C was an example of how to use wood. And now we're working a lot with wood. And uh, maybe it's very sustainable. I like very much the material. We have uh, a lot of wood in Brazil. At the end, you see maybe it's a little bit Japanese because we have an Oguchi lamp in the middle of the space. Yes. <laughs> At the end was a Japanese touch, and of course, I, I, I love Japan, I love the Japanese architecture. What do you think, Gabriel? Oh yeah, I remember, I remember Gabriel also researching about the relation between Brazilian and Gab Japanese architecture. Gabriel, so, Gabriel yeah. knows everything about architecture, uh, the relation between Brazilian and Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> we have to know it from Gabriel. So uh, I, would, I, would, Gabriel? I would say that in Studio SC, uh, we really looked for this. Uh, we, we tried to abstract the materials. That was something that the contemporary architects uh, in Japan were doing at this moment as well. For example, Sejima and uh, Toyoito and uh, Nishizawa, they were also Fujimoto. They were trying really to to abstract the abstract the the texture and work with these uh, flat white uh, panels and uh, surface. So that, that's something that we try to do uh, at uh, Studio C. Uh, I didn't take part so much in the project of Mikasa, Volume C. Uh, I guess there is a kind of atmosphere that recalls the, the Japanese uh, architecture. Uh, the, you have this modulation uh, of uh, the structure, but somehow this is pretty much connected to the use of uh, wood nowadays, this laminated wood. And uh, in the end of the day, there is a big difference in the quality of the wood, uh, the Japanese wood and the Brazilian one, because we are in a tropical country as you, and uh, we have a lot of dark wood. Uh, and the Japanese wood is uh, most of the time uh, uh, light, and they use this uh, uh, technique to, to burn the wood sometimes, but uh, if you are not doing this, uh, the color is uh, considerably lighter. What is very funny that once I went to, to Norway, to Oslo, to give a lecture there, and they would, were completely amazed by the uh, dark wood, the hard dark wood that we have here, and here, when we are designing, the first thing that the clients ask is, can you do this kind of uh, light, uh, almost white wood in the project? Can you bring this? So uh, I think there is a lesson that uh, we're always looking for something that we don't have. Uh, so they love the, the, the Brazilian wood and we love the Norwegian wood. <laughs> so it's, it's very funny, this. So I, I, somehow I agree with Marshall. I think the the, the Gucci, uh, the Gucci Latin uh, is uh, pretty much giving the the sense uh, of the space, the perception of the space. Um, but uh, there there are other things in this project. 
I would try to, to look from this point of view of, as well. Gabriel is uh, now doing his doctorate, doc, doctorate about the relation between the Brazilian architecture and the Japanese architecture. And there is a very strong uh, influence, mainly from Niemeyer, Oscar Niemeyer, in the new generation, not the new generation, but this famous generation of Japanese architecture, like the Sanaa, the So Fujimoto, Nishizawa, and that they and they love, I know that they love, they curated an exhibition, the Sana curated an exhibition of Lina Bobardi in Tokyo, and the one of uh, Oscar Niemeyer in, uh, in Tokyo as well. I would like to, to uh, back to Carlota maybe, because I, I read before that Carlota also joined the workshop uh, with Sejima from Sana in, in Inujima in the island of Inujima, right? So you had experiences with, with M Studio MK27, with Marcio and Gabriel Kogan, and you also uh, had the experiences from Sejima. So in regarding to this kind of relation between Brazilian and Japanese, do you feel any, uh, any in, anything in common? I don't know what mm -hmm. kind of approaches or, or something else. So could you could you explain to us like uh, uh, what kind of workshop that you did uh, in the on the island of Inujima with Sana, and what's the the, the thing in common with you know, yeah. <laughs> you, the, yeah the the experience you had with students? Basically, I, I did a course before of six months with Sejima in Polytechnico, and then I was selected with other five students to go there one month to refurbish. Uh, this uh, this small old uh, house in wood, and I think uh, there you could see the approach to a bit to materials and the taste, which I think it's very close to to Marcus. And in general, it's very close to every kind of uh, I think uh, architect who really wants to care of what he's doing. And in Sejima, is very present. One thing that is very distant is the methodology because. Uh, with Marzio, uh, the, it's more through drawings and the plan and and uh, and so on. In Sejima, it's uh, in Sana, it's like a chaos of models. There were maquettes all over. When I entered the first uh, the studio, I thought it, they were moving. I thought they they, they were like. Uh, there was coffee everywhere, maquette. I thought there was an exhibition and then you just open the boxes and no, it was always like this. Um, so I think it's a bit the opposite in, uh, in Mars studio. Everything is clean and uh, very organized. And you will never find a coffee split on the floor that dated uh, maybe a month ago. Um, I think this is a bit a different uh, point between them. But what it, the result, I think in, in both, they both imagine the, the space. Uh, for example, the script is something that Sejima does as well. When we were doing the projects, she was always thinking, uh, ah, yes, because here I climb and then I look the, the view from this and then I go inside and then I do this and then I do... She was really, as Marcia, she was seeing the scenes um, inside the project which is something that not every architect to do for example i can think at uh, valerio Algiati, which uh, conceives more as the project as a final form as a sculpture and, and it's it looks the projects as a top view and never inside of it and uh, so i think this is quite peculiar of both Brazilian uh, student K27 and Japanese uh, Sejima and Sana. Okay, thank you. I, I visited uh, once, Gabriel visited uh, more than uh, twice uh, times so the Sejima studio in, in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And they, it's very funny because they, they it's exactly uh, what uh, Carlotta said. They are doing the, the cleanest, minimalist uh, 
<laughs> architecture in the world, and the studio is the dirtiest one in the world. It's the not only a mess, it's dirty. But uh, maybe say, another common thing is that also Sana's project, I think they wish for them to be destroyed, as Marcia was saying uh, about his background. I think that one. in both cases, there is a cleanness in the project that they wish to be to become a mess or to like it's a natural background of life but i don't feel also in this case they want to stay wanted to stay like minimal like this they, they want I life would, to come in i would say that a very interesting connection is that uh, at least since the 15th century but i would say since the 9th century uh, Japanese architecture is trying uh, to connect the interior with the exterior uh, and try to dissolve the barriers between inside and outside. And actually th that is uh, very common in Brazilian modernism and became very common in the 20th century here in Brazil and, and started to be the, the trademark, uh, the, the, the logo the main uh, issue of the Brazilian modernism, all these uh, very long uh, um, glass panels that try to connect the interior with the exterior or even the, the pillow cheese that you can find in Rio de Janeiro, uh, the Museum of uh, Art uh, by Afonso Reiji, which is one of the masters of the Brazilian architecture, or even in uh, some of the projects, or most of the projects of Oscar Niemeyer. So this connection between uh, inside and outside, uh, it's something that uh, became uh, uh, a, a, point, a touch point, a point in common no, between the two architectures nowadays. They have a longer history in that. Uh, <laughs> the the Europeans arrived in uh, Brazil in uh, in the 16th century, so that was the moment when this kind of architecture in Japan was reaching the peak. Let's say. <laughs> yes, basically it started with many porticos that has built in Europe, and they brought us to their their. Uh, the, 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 all, the, all over the countries that they colonized, basically, right? I remember uh, there's one uh, writings from Aldo Rossi that fascinates between inside and outside in in the San Andrea ch uh, Church by Leon Battista Alberti. Uh, the, this fascination about inside and outside started from Europe, and and now it's kind of spreading in all over the countries. So. Uh, I think I have to wrap. About <laughs> the Japanese, the, the Sejima and the Studium uh -huh. K27, the common point, in my opinion, is that uh -huh. they both don't draw facades <laughs> in the sense that they don't, they find a way through architecture to, to have the facade as, a, let's say, a, an element integrated with the building and never do the not anymore. The, the first Sana maybe yes, but now the facade is like a grass, a glass filter between interior and exterior or is a panel, but it's never anymore the drawing of the window or, or this kind of uh, architecture. And I think in for Marcio is the same. There is a very interesting question uh, here, Marcio, about uh, the home cooking at the studio. <laughs> oh, I read in Monocle that Studio MK27 has a local home cooked food by Auntie where all the team gather and enjoy the lunch everyone, every day. How do you come, came with this idea, with that idea? Is, uh, it is a very interesting office culture in architecture. How was the influence, the office environment and the outcome project? <laughs> Oscar, Oscar Niemeyer used to say, life is more important than architecture. And we added food to this quote. We have a very nice uh, garden at the back of the office. 
and a very good uh, chef, and they have twice or three times a, a week a lunch. And uh, this is more important than the architecture that, do, that they will do. Um, the activity and the characters inside it are more important. Are, you're truly a facade, right? <laughs> Okay, there, there is, I, I, think, uh, I think there will be an, the last question in here. Moses Matthew is asking a little bit related to the movie. Uh, you usually approach an architectural design by imagining it uh, with a movie narration and script, but in the sequential order, how do you usually approach it in your design? Okay, Gabriel. Oh, yes, Marie Gabriel. You know that uh, Oscar Niemeyer, again, uh, he used to state that uh, he designed and imagined himself inside uh, his building. And, uh, and a film started to screen in his mind, in the back of his mind. And he, from this, he invented the, you know, the distance that he wanted to, to build. And if he was not satisfied with this kind of dream, he would try to go to a new one. Uh, I think that good architecture is always dealing with this kind of process. We Im imagine, we invent architecture in, in our brain, our hand or the, the computer is just a tool. Uh, but we need to be conscious about what you want as an effect. So uh, I think that is always here uh, in, in our mind, in our head. Uh, I don't know, uh, Barsi, if you want to, to say anything else, or Kalota. Oh, oh. Uh, Niemeyer, during uh, his uh, best years, he used to say that uh, the very first moment of the project, he tried to write a text about it. If the text is good, the project it will be good. It, is, it was the experience that we tried to repeat in a polytechnic workshop that uh, Car Carlotta said before. And our first idea was to give to the students uh, the, uh, the challenge to write a, a poetic text about the project. And uh, also here uh, we have Geraldo asking about the connection between the plan 2D and uh, the 3D designing with filmmaking. I think it's more or less the same question. Uh, actually, it's very strange for other design cultures, but uh, we are working a lot in 2D. Uh, so we are using the plan and then uh, we go to the cross section and the 3D most of the time is a conjunction of, of both. Uh, now we've uh, been in uh, these other new software technologies, you can use the 3D together. I'm not a big fan of this actually. And uh, the models here are more like uh, presentations. Uh, we, we don't use models to conceive the form. Uh, Carlotta can say something about this because she had other experience. Uh, for, me, for me, it's like I was born like this. I studied in a school that was teaching like this. I don't know how to, is to design in another manner, but uh, I know that for most of the people, I don't know how is the case in, uh, in Indonesia, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure that in, in Europe and even in US right now, they are developing other kind of design strategies. Um, Rabung say, uh, wrote here, a good cotoleta la milanese is more important than architecture. I agree. I do yeah, think it, it was taken from your code. <laughs> <laughs> it was taken from your code. <laughs> it was, it was, <laughs> totally agree. So, Carlos, in the studio, they use a lot of paper sketch, a lot paper sketch, hand drawing on the plan, a lot. Wow. And now, Mm -hmm. And now during, during the quarantine that you're having now in Sao Paulo, I'm learning how, to, at the first, very, very first moment, I learned how to discuss the project with uh, the architects from, the, from our office. 
in uh, in a Zoom meeting. At the first moment was the how to connect the literature with architecture, explaining, move the a wall for one meter to the right and the other, the window to the, uh, going up <laughs> uh, three meters. And uh, always, this is very tiring, but you can explain a project just saying words. It's possible. And now, and my, uh, for me, the, the very, very first moment was very strange because I, a sketch during four hours a day uh, for 30 something years. And now I'm uh, designing with the tools uh, from, the, from Zoom. We, we received very, it. Very primitive. We received at Politecnico de Milano a formal complaint by one of the students that we were spending too much paper in the class. <laughs> no, you have to do it all digitalized. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay, I, I can imagine the situation of the studio class. So, okay, I guess that's all. Uh, thank you for three of you for uh, spending the our our precious your precious time to to discuss together in the in the front of the audiences of Indonesia. So we are expecting uh, we could we could collaborate more and also uh, we are expecting the the next project of Studio MK twenty seven in Indonesia maybe and also the the visit uh, by Gabriel and, and and Carlotta to Indonesia. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, I guess we we should meet next year in. In, in Europe, maybe in La Biennale di Venezia. Uh, I, I know that during the opening of the Biennale and also uh, during Mantopa Architectura, we usually get, have this kind of a festival together and that's how we've met together. And I hope I will be there next year uh, for La Biennale di Venezia next year. So I guess that's all. Uh, one, again, uh, one, one short thing that I could conclude from from all of our discussion today is like, yes, uh, life is way bigger than architecture. And uh, of course, chick chicken cotoleta also way, way better than architecture. <laughs> then, um, and yes, the, 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 the simplicity of the architecture is just only the framing, the characters and, and whatever activities that inside it. I, I know that movie Cat that uh, produced by, uh, that directed by, by uh, Marcio, uh, also, uh, also uh, uh, played by by their the, the the real owner of the house, which is so much interesting. Also with the cat. Um, okay, that's all. And yeah. once more, thanks again, guys. Um, we will we will uh, catch up very very soon. Thank you. Thank and I would like to to, to, <laughs> to return to our host tonight, uh, Zefa Strapumeda. Thank you, Zefa. And see you next week. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Oh, thank you, thank you, Kamat. I couldn't agree thank more. You. Ten thousand percent food is thank more you. important than architecture. And the first thing after this meeting, me and Randy will go eating it like crazy. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute for a short announcement. For next week on Rabu Madra, we are gonna have a talk about ground call from me as Wanderu, and the presenter will be. Anastasia from Illinois Institute of Technology and a discussion from Fauzia F. Evanindia from Far Architect. So uh, don't miss it, guys. Uh, mark your calendar now. Uh, I tell you again, mark your calendar now because Miss Wanderu is, is gonna rock your world next week. Okay, everyone, live long and prosper. We from Rapung Mada say goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, bye. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you.